The world is full of outrageous stories. Some are so far-fetched you'll greatly doubt their authenticity. That said, truth can be stranger than fiction, most of the time at least. Have a look at these out-of-this-world occurrences and see what we mean. We have a varied list of miraculous occurrences combined with bizarre experiences where the most unlikely people get arrested. So here goes some of the most ridiculous stories that sound fake but are indeed real. But before we get started, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell for more such amazing content. Number 5. Human Mail In 1965, Brian Robson, in search of greener pastures, moved from Wales to Australia. He had, however, not anticipated how much of a struggle it was going to be. The earnings were too low and the grass on the other side was not as green as he thought. He finally decided it wasn't working in Australia and it was time to go home. Home was all the way in Wales, a mighty long way. He didn't have any funds to get home, so he had to be creative at some point, and after racking his brain for some time, he had an idea. So his ingenuity had him sneak into a ship by stealing a pass and stealthily getting past authorities. All seemed to be going well until he got seasick, and upon closer scrutiny, he was discovered by the authorities. His place on the ship was not a legitimate one. They dropped him off in New Zealand, and at this point he was able to get some money from a relative, enough to get him to Sydney. Upon reaching there, he was still a long way from home, and would need quite a large sum to complete his journey. So, what to do? Inspired by the story of another man, Reg Spears, who in 1964 had literally mailed himself from London to Perth, he advised another brilliant plan he was indeed going to mail himself to. He decided to board Qantas Airlines, not as himself, but as a crate. He filled the documentation for the mail order, for the order he would only pay once the crate was delivered, which worked for his lack of money situation. He got the crate dimensions right to the T. He set a date of departure, as and when the day arrived he was on board in a crate and set to continue with the journey home. The side of the box through which Brian climbed nailed shut from the inside once he was in, and he packed a pair of pliers to open it back up when he touched down in London. The crate was approximately the size of a washing machine and was fitted with some pillows. The pillows were only comfortable for so long, after some time he was feeling quite squashed. He was also travelling with his suitcase, so this made the space smaller, where he had to fold his legs at his knees for the entire 36 hours. On the 17th of May, with only a torch and two bottles to hand, one for water and the other for, yeah, nature's emergencies, Brian's journey started. At first, the crate was turned upside down, which was causing his body and neck to throb, bringing a magnanimous headache where he eventually blacked out. After 22 hours of journey, the crate was turned right side up, but his problems didn't end there. He was transferred to a Pan American flight unknowingly, since the Qantas Airlines were overbooked. He then ended up on an even longer flight route to the States. Adding to this, the cargo section where he was placed in the Pan American flight was not heated, and the temperatures caused serious problems. From breathing difficulties to pain in the knees, his body was in absolute torture. Throughout the journey, Brian kept slipping in and out of consciousness. By the time the plane reached the destination, Brian was in such pain he could barely find the strength to check the time on his watch. Luckily, while inside the crate, he left his torch on, and a Pan-American worker was able to come to his rescue after seeing the torch's beams. It was at this point that he discovered that he was not in the UK, but LA. With the discovery of a stowaway, a lot came into play. The first order of business was medical attention. For hours during his treatment, he was stuck in his original travelling position. Additionally, the media and FBI got involved, wondering whether he was a spy or had been kidnapped. In the end, they did not press any charges and decided to send Brian home in first class and style. He spent a total of four days inside the crate. One small fact was that if he had attempted to continue the crate journey from LA to the UK, he would have frozen to death. Phew, good thing he didn't. He's now 75 years old and alive and well. He's written out his entire experience as a film script, and he hopes to get picked up by a production company. If he had a chance to do this again, would he repeat the scenario? Probably not. If he succeeds in getting the film out, just remember, we gave you the story on this channel first. Number 4. Impossible Odds Let's go back to the 1950s at the Westside Baptist Church in Nebraska, where choir practice was set for Wednesdays at 7.20pm prompt. On the 1st of March in 1950, Reverend Walter Kempel, who served in the church, had been there for the better part of the day and had come back home for a few hours. As the time for choir practice approached, something very strange happened as Reverend Walter Kempel was ready to leave the house for the choir practice. 
His daughter had a small accident at home. She dropped a plate of food, broke some crockery, and created quite a mess. The situation took quite some time to resolve. When the Reverend looked at the clock, it was 7.20 p.m. already. He was going to be late for choir practice. You'll never guess what happened at exactly 7.25 p.m. There was a loud explosion at the very Westside Baptist Church. The Reverend heard the loud bang from his home and rushed out immediately. The church's wooden roof collapsed and the walls caved in. When the firefighters got to the scene, they discovered that there was a gas leak that caused the fire. In a frenzy, they went on to look for bodies, but couldn't find any. The gas leak would have also caused the explosion in the afternoon when Reverend was there, but for some reason, it didn't. What happened to the choir of 15 people who were supposed to be there at 7.20 p.m.? The interesting yet fortunate thing was that all of them were late on that very day. It was later established that two ladies were having car trouble, another choir member was finishing a letter, one more person was listening to a program on their favorite radio station, the pianist got late taking a nap, and her mother, who was the choir director, decided to wait for her daughter. So, all in all, every choir member survived the blast. Definitely something worth singing about in the next choir practice. Miracles do happen, I tell you. Number 3. Nutty protest. Let's just agree that politics brings out the worst in people, if this episode in 2016 is anything to go by. Meet 32-year-old Christina Ferguson, who was so fed up with Trump and his shenanigans, she decided to tramp all over Trump's parade one evening in October, armed with a jar of peanut butter. What would that achieve? Wait and see. It was clear that she was an absolute die-hard fan of Hillary Clinton, Trump's opponent, and was going to do her best to make Trump look bad. She majestically marched out into what she thought was a town hall organized by Trump supporters. With her peanut butter started her angry protest and chaos disrupting the meeting. When she was finally chased out, the revelers decided to follow her and, after some time, discovered that she had smeared peanut butter on all their cars. She then ran away to the nearby apartment to seek refuge. When the police were called to the scene of the crime, Christina was hiding out and the guy came to her rescue. He was very protective and insisted Christina had an alibi. She was with him the entire time. Which might have been believable if Christina wasn't standing there licking her peanut butter fingers while talking to the police. What a showdown. Thinking she might have been intoxicated, the officers asked Christina to do a breathalyzer test, which she failed miserably. She'd had more than one too many. This made her talk too much. This is when Christina explained how much she loved Hillary Clinton and spreading peanut butter was her way of protesting against Trump. Get this. Turns out that the people Christina interrupted were not Trump supporters, but members of the Tomorrow River Conservation Group, who were probably finding a river to clean up. Christina Ferguson should have done a little more homework, otherwise she wasted her passionate protest. Number 2. One with Nature Here is a fresh story. In May 2012, Ron Savenden, an aged 75-year-old man, abruptly started becoming seriously ill his symptoms being shortness of breath, weakness, coughs, and dizziness. His wife, Nancy, got a little bit worried when the symptoms persisted and got an ambulance to take him to the hospital. The doctors did all manner of x-rays, tests, and other procedures to figure out what the problem was. There was no cancer or any related diseases, so they couldn't help but wonder. Was Ron suffering from an undocumented ailment? It was quite a conundrum for some time. On a closer, more detailed look, a plant matter was discovered in his lungs. And no, this plant matter was not some salad left behind by the doctors. The medical team came to the conclusion that the pea plant that made Ron's lungs its home was about half an inch of a sprout. How did it get there in the first place, you ask? The only logical guess was that while Ron was eating his meal that had some delicious peas, one of the peas missed its path, and instead of going through the esophagus, it went through the windpipe and straight to the lung. An operation had to be done to remove the pea from the lung. The pea was now a parasite and was causing havoc in Ron's system. It was a successful procedure, and it was super interesting when Ron's friends and family brought dozens of pea delicacies to lighten the situation. Actually, his first meal after his operation was a green bowl of peas. I'd say making jokes about it so early was uncalled for. Well, Ron didn't seem to mind. This guy has a great sense of humor. Next time when someone tells you to clear your plate of veggies, remember this story and go slow on the peas. Number 1. Senior Arrest In March 2020, Ruth Bryant was as happy as can be celebrating her 100th birthday. It's not every day that someone gets to blow 100 candles. 
She was living at the assisted living home in North Carolina and on this special day had her fellow oldies as well as family and friends turn up to celebrate her. As the merriment of the day went on, two deputy policemen showed up and came straight for her. No one could understand what was happening. In a matter of seconds, they handcuffed the hundred-year-old lady. What? Had she robbed a bank? Was she involved in some unknown twisted heinous crime? It all seemed a tad too odd. Nobody had the answers as Ruth was walked out to the police car. As she was taken out, some of the people present tried to make inquiries. The answer they got was rather awkward, that Ruth, a little dear old granny, was being arrested for indecent exposure. She didn't even try to deny it. She was quite rowdy. She caused a fracas as the cops took her to the police car. She wouldn't shut up and kept complaining about the police car seats, as well as all manner of other minute details. She went as far as to kick one of the policemen in the knee. This was one ninja old lady. No wonder they sent two cops to do the arrest. She was quite a handful. At the police station, the mug shots were taken. She was put in an orange jumpsuit. What a sight. After her one phone call, her daughter arrived, and instead of finding her mother locked up and miserable, Mummy Dearest was entertaining the entire office of police officers. The cops were lining up to take selfies with her in her interesting orange jumpsuit. The daughter was confused about how her mother had turned from a criminal doing the perp walk to a celebrity. This wasn't making sense. Okay, wait for it. Turns out this was all a gag that Ruth had put together. In the 100 years she'd lived a life without trouble, and it was now her bucket list to be arrested and get a feel of it. Such an Oscar-worthy performance, she should be out there winning with the likes of Meryl Streep. Anyway, she was able to walk out of the police station after posting her bail in form of a bear hug to the chief jailer and the new proud owner of a criminal record. I bet you her daughter was not so amused. What do you think? If you want to see more unbelievably real stories, stay tuned to this channel and subscribe. It'll be worth it. We never disappoint. Not one bit.